Hi everyone, I am Xinya in Release Group. Um, today I want to talk about this cool feature. It's called Automatic Rollback. Uh, this feature will be shipped in 30.7. So the point of this feature is that um, automating some of the CD workflow. Um, for example, uh, let's say CSCD pipelines already configured in your project. And then every time you merge something, a commit, a future change, or even breaking change into master branch, that creates a new pipeline that deploys uh, the commit to the production server. In theory, all of the commits are safe because uh, there are they were verified in merge requests uh, by CI pipelines, like probably their bunch of testing jobs, for example, our spec jobs. And then that these jobs make sure that the code, uh, which will be will landing on the product environment is safe. But sometimes problematic commit could slip into production environment, for, uh, for example, the future logically correct, logically works. Uh, so the test passes, but since it's inefficient, it causes a production incident performance degre degradation on um, environment uh, that has many active user base. So the problem surfaces only in uh, a specific instance. So uh, this type of um, problem is hard to catch at much request uh, phase. So um, this feature is about uh, rolling back to a previous stable environment, environment if uh, the recent deployment had something trouble. If there's a problem, our new alert is raised and then by receiving that alert, GitLab automatically creates a new deployment uh, that tagging a previous stable commit and then automatically mitigates the production issue. So uh, there's a point of this feature and then let's dive into the demo. So, okay, here we are seeing uh, this demo project. This demo project, let me briefly explain this. This is a Ruby on Rails application, um, already configured auto DevOps. Uh, you can read more about, learn more about auto DevOps in the official documentation page, but it's basically just, um, you don't need to do anything uh, to set up pipelines or CD uh, jobs. Everything is automatic, automatically configured. And then uh, the code will be the application, your application is deployed to Kubernetes cluster. So I already configured this and let's check out the environment page. Here, um, the production environment is already created and it's, let's check out the web page here. Uh, since this is very basic application, it just shows um, the simple page, um, but that's enough for demonstra demonstration. And we are seeing that uh, Kubernetes cluster, um, the status, the here are two paths on the production environment. At the next, let's take a look at the monitoring dashboard. Here's a, a couple of metrics on this environment, how this performs well, um, everything is normal. Uh, how about memory usage, uh, CPU usage, et cetera. And in this demo, we are specifically looking at this, HTTP error late on um, Nginx Ingress. Um, <clears throat> so uh, if something went wrong on our application that causes uh, 500 error. 500 error means uh, internal server error. So something went wrong during processing user requests. Um, so ideally the rate of 500 should be 0% or 
or nearly zero percent. Um, but sometimes you might see a spike on this, uh, and if a bad commit, uh, the broken commit is uh, deployed to a production environment. So let's try to make a bad commit here uh, intentionally. <clears throat> okay, we visit here and then let's say uh, make an error. Yeah, I made a change right now and then uh, this change will be deployed to in production environment. Again, this shouldn't be happen. Uh, this should be caught at the testing phase. But uh, here we are in the situation that uh, if the code bad commit, it slipped in the testing phase and then landed on the production. And let's wait a bit until this gets on the production. It doesn't take a while, but uh, let's resume from uh, let's resume after this pipeline finished. Okay, so the deployment pipeline has just finished. Uh, the, this problematic commit uh, landed on the production environment. And let's take a look at the alerts. Here, we are seeing that a critical alert just created three minutes ago. It's uh, related to HTTP error late. Let's take a look inside. Um, there are a bunch of informations on this alert, uh, but the point is that the, uh, this alert happened on production. So let's take a look at the metric, uh, metrics again. Okay, scrolling down to the uh, Nginx English HTTP error late. Um, here, we are seeing this commit A1FC020E. This was a commit uh, we made, uh, bad commit. And then right after the deployment, the, there's a huge spike here. Uh, the error rate uh, increased to 100%. And in a typical situation, SLEs um, start investigating on what went wrong, uh, what caused uh, this spike here. If they figure out that this deployment is uh, related to this incident, maybe they perform a rollback. But what's inter interesting here is that we see another deployment here. Uh, this deployment is created by to roll back the newly introduced feature in 30.7. So this deployment is triggered by this alert that um, here critical alert ra is raised. And then GitLab automatically trying to mitigate the problem by redeploying the, the previous stable deployment. So uh, interestingly, we think that the spike is mitigated from 100% to zero right after this old rollback uh, or old rollback. So this feature frees operators from um, the duty duty to keep looking at the metrics, keep looking at the alerts uh, by just mitigating the problem automatically. And uh, let's take a look at the alert page again. Here, alert is gone. This is because the problem was uh, resolved by the old rollback. Uh, let's take a look at the environment page at the last. Here, here's a deployment index page. We are seeing the history of deployments. And here, uh, the latest one, uh, number 20, is uh, the deployment created by old rollback. So um, yeah, this is a safe one. And the previous one, uh, this A1FC was a uh, deployment we uh, made that uh, the, the problematic code, problem, problematic commit that triggered high spike. You can also see the deployment history in this page that when auto rollback happened. All right, 
that's everything about the old rollback feature uh, will be introduced in 30.7. It's available in GitLab Ultimate. Um, please take a look at the documentation here. It has more description on the explanation on this feature. And also there are a couple of limitations. Uh, please make sure that uh, if this meets your criteria before you actually enable this feature. To enable this feature, um, you need to visit the project configuration page. Here is a uh, steps to enable the feature. Um, this feature is disabled by default, uh, but uh, um, it's worth considering. If you have any questions or feedback or suggestions to improve this feature, please uh, leave a comment in this issue or um, please create a new issue here uh, in this GitLab project. Your variable feedback is always welcome. So thank you for watching this video and then see you in the next video. Bye.